Some of you might not know this, but before I got into YouTube, I was a front-end web developer. And as a developer, I spent a lot of time doing all kinds of different things on multiple projects throughout the day. The problem that I ran into is that while I was bouncing from one thing to the next, I still had to keep tabs of the time that I was spending on each different thing. I really wish I'd had something like Timelight back then. When you first open Timelight, you're greeted with a simple page that has a running timer, a place to enter a note, a reset button, and an add button. After you've completed one of your tasks, you can enter a note about it and click add, or just hit the enter key on your keyboard, and the timer resets and starts counting again. Also, you can use hashtags to categorize your work by job or task type. If you'd like to see the entries that you've recorded, you can head over to the menu down the left side of the page and click on the list icon. And doing this will show you all of the entries for a given time, and you can also see your start time, your subtotal, and your total time working, but you may see some discrepancies if there's any time that's not accounted for. You can also export your time for the day by clicking the export button and downloading a spreadsheet of your recorded times. The last icon in the left menu will give you a summary of your time in the form of a graph and will break down your times by the hashtag you used in your time entries. And then to get back to the homepage, you can just click the stopwatch icon on the top left part of that menu. The nice thing about Timelight is that everything is stored in the browser, so there's no database information to worry about. But this also means that there are no user accounts, registrations, notifications, or anything else like that. This is just a simple time tracking application in your browser. Again, this is something that I really wish I'd had when I was writing code and working on multiple projects on any given day, because this would have saved me so much headache. Deploying Timelight in Docker is pretty straightforward. You'll just need to SSH into your server and clone the Timelight repository with the get clone command. Then we'll want to change directory or CD into the Timelight directory with the command CD Timelight. And if we list everything in the Timelight directory, we'll see that there are a few files, including a docker compose.yml file. So let's open that docker compose and take a look. Overall, this is very straightforward, but there are a couple of things to be aware of here. First, we're gonna have to build the application, so it may take a few extra moments to bring it up, but that is really nothing out of the ordinary for what we're doing here. Next, you'll notice a request for a .env file. The problem with that is that there is no .env file in the timeline directory. There's also not one in the GitHub repository. I mean, there is, but uh, it's in the sample files directory and you can find it with the name env.sample. So because there is no .env file, you'll want to manually create that uh, using nano.env um, to open up a .env file to manipulate and then copy and paste uh, the contents of the env sample file over on GitHub into your .env file. You can change the port as necessary as this does by default, go to port 8000, but uh, if you're using Portainer, uh, Portainer already uses port 8000, so uh, I've changed it to 8008. Once you've got your Docker Compose file configured the way you want it, you can save and exit the file and then bring it up using the Docker Compose up D command. Now you'll see that I'm running this as Docker space Compose up D. Uh, you may have a different version of Docker or Docker Compose on your system, so you may want to run Docker dash Compose up D. Uh, just kind it depends on your system. There are a couple of different ways that this could go. After a couple of moments, you'll see that the terminal says that it is done. So let's head over to our browser and take a look. And just that easily, we can see that our timelight container is up and running and already counting the time for us. It's also super easy to get this set up on a domain using a reverse proxy of your choice so that you can keep track of your time from anywhere. Just remember that your time entries are stored in the browser's storage. So if you move from one computer or device to another, any entries you have stored on one device won't show up on the new device. If this is a project that you would use in your daily workflow, let me know in the comment section down below. Also, if you enjoyed this project, be sure to give the project a star over on GitHub. Also, if you'd like access to my content without any ads and sometimes early, uh, you can become a channel member here on YouTube. You can become a patron or you can join dbtech.fans and you'll be able to watch my videos without any interruption. But with that said, I am gonna go ahead and wrap this up. I do wanna thank you guys for spending a few minutes of your day with me today and I'll talk to you in the next video.